Welcome to the Journeyman Open, the 2024 PGA Championship at Valhalla Golf Club in Louisville, Kentucky. I am excited. I hope you are excited. We got you covered with everything you need to know in a short period of time with the 555 Podcast brought to you by DFS Army. What up, what up, what up, everybody? It's your boy, DFS Up North, here with another 555 PGA podcast. Whoa, I just had like a brain fart there. Uh, Yeah, brought to you by DFS Army, where I give you my five favorite punts, my five favorite plays, and five key stats for the week. And this week, ladies and gentlemen, it is major number two of the season. We have the PGA Championship. I'm still not used to uh, the PGA Championship being in the spring, in May, uh, used to be August, but uh, here we are. We are at Valhalla Golf Club. If you remember Valhalla, you probably can think back to uh, the 2008 Ryder Cup where we have the pod system with Paul Azinger. Uh, we had the 2014 PGA Championship was here. Rory McIlroy won that with just a, an impressive performance, which I expect him to repeat again this week, but more on that in a little bit. Um, or the 2016 U.S. Uh, junior Amateur, uh, the U.S. Junior, right? Uh, Akshay Bhatia was the winner here uh back in 2016 so ball great golf course uh i'm really excited about it we'll talk about it here in a minute very very similar to last week quail hollow uh if you watched this last week you probably cashed some money because we did all right last week we were on rory we were on benny on uh we had a, a pretty solid week for the boys here over at dfs army uh if you want to get involved and use all of the tools or anything that i talk about this week get access to my full cheat sheet where i break these guys down even in more depth you can use that code up north. Let me get in the screen there. Up north, 10% off VIP monthly membership. Uh, if you are not a VIP, we do have, uh, you know, last week we did the props thing, uh, the free week of membership that is over now. We are starting a baseball one here soon. So if you follow us on Twitter at DFS Army or you can follow my Twitter at DFS up north, I can get you access to that. So five key stats for the PGA championship this week. It starts with length, 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 length. Uh, if you're from Minnesota, uh, the length is huge here. Super long par 71. They can stretch it out to 7609. They added about 151 yards to uh this course from the 2014 edition. It's a big boy course. All right. That being said, uh, it is not, I don't think it's something that we need to necessarily be like, oh, you have to, like, you can only play Wyndham Clark and Rory and these guys who hit at 300 yards. Like, as we saw last week at Quail Hollow, there is multiple ways to skin a cat, as my grandfather would say. Uh, you can get it around you, but there isn't, there's going to be an advantage this week if you are long off the tee. You saw it last week if you watched any of the golf with Rory hitting uh, wedges while Xander was hitting seven irons into these uh, kind of baked out tough greens. We're going to see that again this week, I think. So uh, length is definitely a factor this week. Uh, another thing that when you are building your lineups, you need to think a little bit about is that there are 20 PGA Tour pros. That means two things, all right? It's unlikely that we see a Michael Block situation like last year, right? Uh, that's that's fairly unlikely. But what that does mean is you take your 156 players in the field. Now you get that down to 136. Uh, that means that it's going to be even more important to get a six of six lineup into the weekend. But uh, it's also going to be easier because you're dealing with a smaller pool of players. Uh, that being said, I my guess is that you're going to need a six of six. But we've seen crazy things happen where multiple chalk players like if Rory and Scotty both miss the cut this week, then I don't think you'll need a five, uh, a six of six to cash. Right. Um, so definitely something to consider when you're building your lineups. I do think we can get a little bit more funky than um, a normal major where I'm just praying that I get a six of six uh, most weeks. Uh, grass types. All right. Zoisha fairways. That is one big difference here, uh, than what we saw in 2014. Uh, and these are going to make the course play a little bit shorter. So like I said, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. Uh, you can, uh, definitely get a little bit more run out on this Zoisha. It actually plays kind of similar to like a bent grass. It's just hardier. It lasts long. It's able to withstand sort of the transition zone that Kentucky is in. Uh, so you're going to get great lies. Uh, the Zoysia fairways are going to be premium this week. So if you hit in the fairway, you're going to be in good shape. The rough, I don't expect it to be that thick this week. It does look pretty thick around the greens. Um, so if you miss the green, it's going to be fairly thick. That being said, 
that kind of evens out the field for everybody else, right? When they, when it's a little bit short and you need to be a little bit more creative or you can get a little bit more creative around the greens. Right now, if you miss the green, you're going to hack it up, try to make not make bogey, all right? Um, so again, a premium placed on ball striking. Uh, journeyman's major, all right? Uh, Jimmy Walker, Jason Day, Jason Duffner is all winners of this event in the last 15 years. Uh, it is uh, the event that we see maybe happen the most of guys kind of out of nowhere winning their one or only major uh, here. You know, Keegan Bradley got a PGA uh, championship as well. So uh, if you're looking through and thinking, all right, who can sort of contend this week? Uh, yeah, you know, don't write out any of these guys, even though there may be sub 7K. You know, a guy with upside that wins a regular tournament, like I think he's more likely to win here than any other major. So uh, easy question mark would be the five, the, the fifth key stat. And while it is long, I do think that this course is going to play fairly easy this week. We had 15 guys in double digit par back in 2014. Wouldn't be surprised to see that again. Rory won at minus 16. I'm, I'm guessing that's sort of what we're going to be looking at for the winning score. I wouldn't be surprised to see it even get to like minus 18, minus 19, um, especially with the rain we're expecting this week to soften the course up a little bit. So while it is a major. I don't think that we can expect sort of major U.S. Open type scoring here. We're going to see some birdies. All right. Guys are going to make birdies um, and they're going to have to make hay on the par fives. Right. We look at this scorecard. It will give me back there. Um, can I go back? Well, let me go back. There we go. Uh, it, it's fairly long, right? Two converted par five, uh, you know, 597 for the par four or per the for the par five seventh. Long 208 on the par three, 190 par five that's 508 on 16 590 par five to 11 like this is obviously tipped out it's not going to play that long every day i guess on thursday we will probably see like 7400 or something like that so it's not going to be uh crazy but again you got to make hay on those par fives and hang on uh looking at my favorite plays for the week all right we are not messing around we are going right back to the well with my boy rory mcelroy he was a core play for me last week he is a core play for me again here um i am looking at being well over 50 percent on rory mcelroy this week in mme and the reason being is is that he's just he's so much cheaper than scotty all right uh we're looking at similar upsides uh obviously the win uh scotty's what plus 450 rory's 750 right now incredibly short odds for both of them. I love Rory this week, though. I think that he smashes and comes back here and wins. But I also love Scotty. And here's the thing. I think that you can absolutely stack them up this week uh, on both sites. I don't think that it is that hard. And I don't think that your lineup looks that bad. Um, so I am going to look at quite a few lineups this week where I am playing both Rory and Scotty together. That is not something I normally do. But with the pricing down to five thousand, uh, and there's there's some good plays. And here's the deal: I'm going to be honest with you guys. I am a sucker for a European Tour player, a, a DPWT guy. Like I am, I am absolutely a sucker for. So guys, like uh, we'll we'll talk about here in a minute. But maybe one guy that we're not talking about is Sebastian Soderberg. Uh, I, I think that those guys can play. It's obviously a big step coming over here, but I am going to be in on guys like that and guys that are, are underpriced, uh, just because they play maybe on the DP w, WT are going to be, uh, good values this week. Justin Thomas that he did enough last week to not get a ton of buzz coming in here, but I, I've, I've been marking Valhalla for Thomas all year. Uh, I think that this is, uh, you know, obviously he's had some success at the PGAs. Uh, the, the courses that they tend to play are, are, are similar. Uh, so I like Justin Thomas a lot this week. His game's in good shape. Benny on who absolutely crushed last week. Weirdly the unreal putter. Like, I don't know if you guys saw his Twitter, but he posted uh, the I'm inevitable uh, Thanos uh, post. And somebody said, you'll never guess who is the number one putter this week. Love Benny on in a big boy course. Love Benny on in a big boy course. Sung JM. Again, we said last week paying, he, he was sick. He is going to pay everybody off who played him last or two weeks ago. And when he WD, I think this is another great course set. We know that quail hollow and uh, Valhalla are very, very similar. I love Sanjay this week. Uh, he's got great short game. Uh, he, I thought he looked strong last week. His irons were a little bit off. He was just a little short. Every time I, every time I watched him swing, like he, he hits it on such a freaking rope. It's insane. Um, how straight he hits it like but he was just a little off he was a little short so if they can get that dialed in this week i think that sung jay is going to obviously played really really well last week but i think he's going to contend even more we look at the uh the punts that i love this week 
All right. And it starts off with the journeyman's opens journeyman. Does that makes sense. Uh, Keith Mitchell. I love Keith Mitchell this week. Uh, the guy is a bomber, loves these big courses. We're still in the sort of South area here. Bent grass greens has been playing great. He's got three top tens in his last or three top twenties in his last, uh, four events. Uh, 6,600 on DraftKings, 8,400 on FanDuel. I, I am a big Keith Mitchell stand this week. I think that if some rando wins this week, it's going to be somebody like Keith Mitchell. Uh, so I am going to be in on him and overweight. Uh, following that up with a former world number one amateur, Kita Nakajima. Been playing great golf on the Japan Tour and the DPWT. He's actually leading the DPWT in strokes gained. Uh, like, just been playing great golf all year. Again, 5,900. I said earlier, I love these cheapy uh, Euros. Uh, and then Jordan L. Smith, another cheapy guy, pom bombs it off the tee. Uh, been playing just sort of really consistent golf. Uh, at 5,500, I can get on board with that. Uh, and then Taylor Moore uh, obviously had a rough, rough Sunday. A rough Sunday. All right. He had a rough Sunday, uh, which actually maybe is better, right? He, um, he, he's not going to be crazy high owned this week. So, uh, I love a Taylor Moore option at 6,200. Uh, he can putt, he can, he can hit the ball off the tee. He's not the world's best ball striker, but I think that he's got enough sort of skills in his game that he can contend. And a guy that I, you know, he has major chops. I think he's got major chops. I think that he can play under the pressure in these sort of big situations and, and, Content. All right. So I'm a big Taylor Moore guy this week as well. And then finally, uh, a live guy, David Puig. We've been hearing about him for a while. Big, tall, long, like he's got tons of upside. And just a, a live guy at 5,800, I think, uh, just because he doesn't have any major experience is is somebody who they got an invite, right? So he's obviously been playing good golf. Uh, I can definitely get on board with some David Puig at lower ownership. So uh, PGA Championship, we have you covered for everything at DFS Army. My cheat sheets will be up hopefully tonight or tomorrow. Um, completed, I'm about halfway through right now. Uh, I'm just, I, I love this field. I love the pricing. I love sort of the strategy of this week so far, or what they've created for the strategy so far this week in the in the pricing. Um, and I'm I'm writing far too much about all these guys so if you guys want access to that you get that code uh dfs up or sorry not dfs up north just up north that gets you 10 percent off of vip monthly membership um hit me up in the discord when you get there who do you think is going to win the pga championship leave a comment below you know i got my boy rory this week pga whoa 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 rider cup pga i gotta move my head it's always so hard to do backwards harding park call it more cow one i really like Colin this week that he's a good play too. Um, but I'm going with Rory this week. Leave me a comment. Let me know who you are going to win. If you pick it right, I'll give you a shout out on next week's 555 podcast. Again, my name's DFS Up North, aka Josh Thomas, brought to you by DFS Army. Check us out at DFS Army or DFSArmy.com. Cheers, everybody. Have a great week.